Hey there, welcome to Broadcast to Post. I'm Jeff Sengpil, CTO at Keycode Media. This is the show where we interview leaders and experts in the AV, broadcast, and post production spaces. We're giving you the inside tips to grow your media workflows and business today. Hey everyone, thanks for watching Broadcast to Post. I'm your host, Jeff Sengpil. First time on the new set. I'm hugely excited. Let's be honest here, as of late, there's been very few head-turning technologies introduced to the post-production community. LucidLink's CloudNAS is arguably one of the rare exceptions to this trend. Our phones are buzzing with post houses trying to figure out how to integrate LucidLink's CloudNAS into their workflows. It's been a fantastic way to instantly start a cloud hybrid model for collaborative video editing. Within minutes, editors can be working on a cloud-based file space sharing files and projects, practically using any editing software application over their home internet connection. Hey, we've got other episodes that help explain LucidLink in much more detail, and we'll include the links in this episode's des description. Take a look below. So today we're going to dive into the next part of what LucidLink customers always ask. We get what it does, but is it compatible with insert this thing here. Today, we're gonna to talk about what other products in a common post-production workflow work and how these product workflows are enhanced when you connect them with LucidLink. Joining us is LucidLink's Director of m e Sales, David Leopold. David, welcome back to the show. Editing software, let's start with the basics. Um, Adobe, Blackmagic, Avid, Final Cut, Autodesk. There's really not a single creative tool that's used for everything. Do all creative media and project files and plugins work with, within LucidLink? Um, what are some of the nuances, or maybe call them gotchas, to setting some applications up? Uh, where do you think it would be a good place to start with that? So, you know, the, the short answer to does everything work with LucidLink is yes. You know, remember that a LucidLink file space just sort of acts and looks like a local volume. It feels like a local volume. So it really works with every creative application you can think of, every asset management platform, every plugin, script, you name it. Really, anything that can read a file from a local drive can read a file from a LucidLink file space to the applications and to the software. There, there's really no difference. So that really gives you the ultimate flexibility when you're defining, defining and designing your workflows. You can use any aspect that's working for you, and you can use LucidLink to build upon that. Uh, as far as nuances or, or sort of gotchas, there's there's none that really come to mind as something that's going to be a real blocker or, or take significant uh, configuration. A couple things that we do usually make mention of sort of best practice wise is, you know, there's things like in Premiere Pro, there's a, an audio setting that it, that's a, the setting is to automatically generate audio waveforms. Um, we recommend that you turn that off because generating waveforms for the entire project or for an entire sequence means that Premiere has to read the entire data set to do that. And, you know, LucidLink, what we do, our efficiency is really built around streaming the data that you need on demand and not sending extra data that you don't need. So if you're auto-generating those waveforms, you're reading data that you really don't need. And you don't need to worry. Those waveforms will be generated as you actually read the file, but you don't need to do it up front. Uh, the, the other one that we usually make mention of is that if you are working in Avid, let's say Media Composer, uh, Avid environments, if you're looking to make use of uh, bin locking sort of simulated Nexus workflow, uh, you will need an additional uh, third party application that can simulate that bin locking. So uh, that could be Mimic from Hedge or uh, Osiris from Projective IO. Uh, we, we often work with those two to simulate that, that bin locking that enables the, the collaboration uh, between Avid users. And I remember the last time we, we talked a, a while back, uh, Mimic wasn't online for you guys yet. That's that's good news. Right. Um, so let's dig a little deeper uh, collaborative editing with uh, Adobe Productions for Premiere Pro. Uh, for those that aren't familiar, it brings a lot of offline, online collaborative features TV and film editors are used to. Um, 
using into Premiere Pro. How would you describe Adobe products for Premiere Pro merge or in tandem with a Lucid Link workflow? So uh, that, that's a great question. You know, the Adobe Productions is something that I had seen sort of as it, I was, it was being built. I, I saw some beta versions, but when it was finally released, uh, it was right before the pandemic. You know, it was, it was weeks before, maybe a couple months before. And it was something that we had been waiting for as editors for, for quite some time. And I think they did a really great job with it, building in all that collaboration, building in the online offline stuff, building that sort of project locking or, or you know, bin locking functionality. But the, the one big limitation is that it requires centralized storage that everyone's connected to. It doesn't work without that. And so when it was released, I was really excited because, hey, it, it's here. It's available for us now. And within a few weeks, everyone was sent home and people were no longer connected to that centralized storage. And the, the great news is that LucidLink actually fixes that problem. It fills that gap. Uh, we sometimes are referred to sort of as an, uh, a cloud NAS so we really function like that shared on-prem storage that everyone's used to, only we're hosted in the cloud. So no matter where you are, you can connect to that shared storage, and it takes the place of that centralized storage that Adobe Productions relies on. So with this, you now get that all that functionality. You know, we, we say you should host your projects and productions in your LucidLink file space because that keeps everyone in sync across the board. But that means that not only in addition to the, the projects and the media, you also have all those lock files now that are working, you know, in tandem uh, across every user that's touching that production. Now, as far as online offline workflows go, you know, we sometimes talk about online offline or, or really proxy workflows and as far as I'm concerned, Adobe has just a really incredible, uh, simple mechanism for proxy workflows. You know, they they give you the ability to automatically generate proxies as you're importing footage, and it's a simple toggle button to move back and forth be between the two. So when you start looking at proxy workflows and doing online offline using LucidLink, what we've done is we allow you to ingest directly, you know, ingest your high res directly into your LucidLink file space. The uh, Premiere Pro, in conjunction with Media Encoder, is generating those proxies in real time as you're working um, and placing them alongside or in another folder within that same file space. So your high res is going into the file space. And the associated proxies are also going directly into the file space. So we've taken sort of this complicated, time-consuming process of transcode, upload, share, uh, deploy, uh, edit, and use all, all those things that normally take a lot of time. That's now a simple, you know, one-step drag-and-drop operation. So it, it's completely transformed the way that, that we work with this. The other thing to note is that LucidLink doesn't require proxies uh, and it doesn't do the transcoding itself. So we encourage people, if, you're, if your system can support using the, the high res, if it's appropriate, to use that high res. So that means that you simply drag and drop your, your footage into Premiere and whether you're an editor working on the proxies or a colorist working on the high res you have that at your disposal, you know, with that same immediacy, uh, that same access point that you would have um, if you had been on-prem. Cool. So, all right. So that, that touches on, we, we touched on shared projects in Avid. We touched on shared projects in Premiere Pro. So anyone who set up um, Resolve in a shared environment, no, it behaves a little bit differently. They have their database mm -hmm. structures. Um, is there a way to share projects if you're using DaVinci Resolve? Absolutely. You know, we we work really well with DaVinci Resolve, Media Composer, Premiere Pro. Um, 
Autodesk, uh, any really any creative applications. And I can talk through different workflows, but what it all comes down to at a fundamental level is all of these applications see your files, see the Lucid Link file space as a locally mounted volume. So however you used to work, you know, if you know how to use a USB drive to access files, you know how to use a Lucid Link file space. And so in the end, we really see ourselves as an invisible solution because you don't need to tailor your workflows to a new solution. Um, you just work the way that you're used to working. So in the case of DaVinci Resolve, in the case of Avid Media Composer, all the file structures and hierarchies that you find in the file system are just automatically generated the exact same way that you would work as if uh, everything were local to you. So to, to follow up on that discussion about Telestream, um, I know you guys just announced an exciting workflow with AJA and Telestream and uh, working for our friends over at Discovery. Any any insight on you can give us on that? Uh, this announcement's really exciting. What we've been able to do is we've been able to connect both AJA technologies and Telestream technologies into completely new workflows. And the key to this one is that we put LucidLink not just on a client, but we put LucidLink on the server level. And what that's been able to do is it enables us to connect, you know, AJA Discover Media Edition starts immediately doing all the cataloging of these files that are coming in. And Telestream Glim allows people to start doing the review and taking a look at the, uh, the properties of the files. And that also uh, takes it directly to Telestream Vantage for any transcoding uh, operations that need to happen. So these are all working in tandem and simultaneously. How are post-production folks benefiting from having these workflows connected via LucidLink? I mean, I, I think it's really, really a huge step forward. The idea that we're now transcoding directly into cloud storage and not just cloud storage for storage sake, but because we can stream those files and stream that data from, from your file space, from the cloud, it's usable uh, in process. So as you're transcoding, you can access things, start running QC on, on these files. Uh, you can run your automations. You can uh, send certain transcodes to certain folders that have permissions to the people that need it. You know, maybe it's OTT requires one format and broadcast requires another format. And then you're putting originals or or clips into archive, you know, all of that can be run basically using that file space as though it were local storage. You know, I, I don't want to sound like a broken record, but that's what it comes down to every time is that all of these applications, all of these platforms, all of these workflows just see a volume. They don't know where it is, but they treat it like it's local. Awesome. Solving previously unsolvable problems. So more of a side note on this one, but you'd mentioned before um, a unique live ingest to, to tape workflow. I don't know why we still call it tape. You recently did with Wirecast and LucidLink. Don't want to miss an opportunity to have you share uh, that example with us. Yeah, absolutely. This was a lot of fun. Um, before I dig into that, you know, just sort of talking about ingesting directly into a file space, this is opening up opportunities everywhere. You know, we're, we're working with things like Telestream Lightspeed uh, to, as we capture, we feed it through Lightspeed and ingest directly into the file space for a growing file. And that allows us to do, uh, to work remotely and collaborate remotely on growing files. Um, so the idea that you can have a sporting event or let's say an award show that's shooting in L.A., you're capturing directly into your file space and you now have a team of editors in New York, an infinite size team. You know, you could have 20, 30 editors waiting for this footage. And as it's being captured, the editors are picking it up and starting to work with it for all the, not just recuts, but clipping, logging, whatever you need to do. Um, 
so we've we've opened up this opportunity that you no longer need the resources, the space, all the all the people on site that we've used in the past. We now make it a much more streamlined operation on site, on location, and you can have whatever size team you need at the ready for this this footage coming in. So knowing that we can do that, I recently had an opportunity to do a personal project that was a lot of fun for me, where I was working with a very talented muralist. And she was going to be painting a mural on a wall, I think it was about a 10 foot by nine foot wall. And I wanted to capture the entire process uh, and probably turn it into a, a time lapse. But I also wanted to make sure that I had all the footage in, in real time so I could either adjust the time lapse or do any other editing I wanted to and have all that footage. And so I had to figure out how am I going to do this? Normally, I would I would capture, I'd probably buy a couple terabytes uh, external drives and connect them to my computer and try and capture to those drives. But I, I didn't know how long this process was going to be. I figured it would probably be a couple days and I didn't know how much storage I was going to need. So obviously, you know, I, I work for Lucid Link. I'm always thinking about Lucid Link and I thought this would be a perfect time for me to test something out. And so I got a Wirecast license and through Wirecast, I, I simply had my, you know, my uh, webcam on my computer pointing at this artist as she was working. Um, and through Wirecast, I recorded the entire process, the course of which was about two and a half days. It was about 15 hours of her working. The entire process was recorded in real time into my file space. So I didn't need to worry about local storage. I didn't need to worry about it filling up. I simply hit record and let the camera roll th throughout the entire process. And what's amazing is I was able to uh, check from another computer. I didn't want to touch the one that was recording, but I was able to see it as it was coming in, make any adjustments. I could have other collaborators from anywhere see this footage as it's coming in. If they wanted to do any polls for promotions for this muralist, they could do that in real time. And I had it all banked and fully secure and backed up by the time this uh, this process was over. So with uh, one of the more recent announcements of integrations with Cinedec, I, I know Cinedec has a ton of useful tools. It's widely known for the insert edit feature, which allows you to do a quick fix solution for correcting um, things like you know, credit typos or, or, or fixes directly on the finished file without the need for re-exporting. I was an early adopter myself. Um, so what are some of the big advantages of using LucidLink with Cinedec together? So... This this integration is really one of my favorites. I think it's an amazing synergy. And I, I use that word lightly. I know it, it's thrown around as a buzzword and doesn't usually mean much. But in this case, I, I think it's, it's really um, appropriate. Because what Cinedec is doing with their Cinex tools, and specifically, as, as you mentioned, this, this Cinex insert tool that allows you to do insert edits on files... I thought that alone was an amazing tool. I saw it years ago and it just sort of blew my mind. Fast forward a few a few years, I saw LucidLink. That blew my mind. And when I first heard that one of my colleagues was sort of looking at how we can bring the two together, I was just so excited to see what we could do here. And so for, for those who don't know, CineX insert, as Jeff, as you were saying, allows you to do an insert edit in a video file, the kind that you we used to be able to do on tape. But since files, uh, since we're now working uh, with files and, and digital first, if there was an error in a in a video prior to this, your only option was to re -ex you know, make the change and re-export the entire file. And having worked as an editor who had to do everything from beginning of the process all the way through delivery, I had to do this a lot. I had to 
re-export due to, you know, QC would, would come back flagging. Maybe it was a shot. Maybe it was a single frame of something. It could be audio that was blown out. It could be color levels that were, weren't legal. Um, you know, you try to get everything perfect the first time around, but it's, it's rare that everything goes off completely without a hitch. But when you're working with a series that could be a half hour long or hour long episode, the, the idea of having to re-export a file every time, you're talking about hours, days in the end, weeks worth of work or, or weeks worth of sitting and waiting for something to happen. Um, and it, it just became a huge time suck. So when you can introduce something like CineX insert into the mix where uh, you can simply make a change, all you need to export is that one frame or those three seconds and just insert it back into the file, you've immediately condensed the time that it takes to, to do that review, to do that re-delivery process. So then we started looking at how does this work with LucidLink? If your file is in LucidLink and that's the one that you're inserting your correction into, it's it's really incredible to watch. You know, it's one of those moments where it feels like a magic trick. You don't want to blink because you can play a section of, of a video file. You do your insert edit. You move the playhead back to where you started and play it again. And you see that change already affected. So the, the changes, the inserts happen instantly. Uh, you know, it, it could be a few seconds, but for all intents and purposes, it is instant. And so the idea that you now no longer have to re-deliver either, that file is sitting in the same location for anyone who was going to pick it up. Uh, has just completely changed how we do things. Um, and the other thing is, if it's sitting in a watch folder, it just got a new time and date stamp, and the watch folder is going to pick it up, and they toss it into a Telestream workflow for creating all those other deliverables. So you've done the fix, and it's already out the door. That, that, that's the power of the whole um, integration setup. That's right. It, it comes down to the fact that there's no more re-export and there's no more re-delivery. So all the time from those two processes now come back to you for whatever you need to use that time for. Post-production at the speed of thought. That's right. I'm going to have to trademark that. Uh, Let's get into media asset management. There's tools like Frame.io, Iconic, SNS's Share Browser, and then there's CatDV out there. Typically, it's the media library that's being accessed via cloud or on-prem. The media is previewable or viewable and searchable using metadata and other AI search tools. What are the most popular media asset managers you're seeing connected with LucidLink? Um, Any unique workflow stories that we can talk about here? So, you know, as I was saying, sort of with the, the creative applications, we work with every media mass, media asset management tool, and really any asset management tool across the board. Uh, it could be we we see a lot of a lot of customers using things like Iconic, uh, which has become very popular, and it's it's easy. The integration is so easy, and that's what we love about this. As I was saying before, we look like a local volume. And that's the that's the secret to all of these integrations. So in the case of something like Iconic, you have your ISG running on maybe a Windows server and you have uh, your your LucidLink file space mounted there and you point Iconic at that file space and it will scan the entire file space. So now you have all your all your data scanned and you can open up uh, your your web viewer, or you can open up your iconic panel, let's say in Premiere Pro, and all of that media is just there. It's ready. It's waiting. And because the end user, let's say an editor working in Premiere, is connected to that same file space, there's no additional downloads that are needed. You select the file you want, you import it into Premiere, you start working with it. There's no downtime whatsoever. The other thing that we see a lot right now where I think it's a a pretty interesting workflow is the use of frame IO. Um, We have, we were talking about using Telestream to ingest directly into the cloud frame IO 
has captured a cloud or camera to cloud. And we see a really great workflow with that where you capture directly from your camera through frame directly into frame IO in the cloud. And you then download not to an individual's workstation, but you download that media into your lucid link file space. And once again, you now have all of that media completely immediately available to anyone who's connected to that same file space. And you still maintain all the functionality of frame IO for any asset management organization logging or, you know, review and approve that frame IO does so well. Cool. So let's, I got a two part question for you. First of all, let's start with on-prem storage and we're going to end with bread and butter cloud NAS. Um, in regards to on-prem, uh, Avid Nexus, there's SNS Evo, Facilis, is Hub, uh, Quantum, to name a few providers. Is there an easy button or best practices to configuring hybrid workflows that move media between the local storage and LucidLink? Uh, we've got some experience here at, at Keycode, so uh, you know, please uh, share your thoughts on it, and we can also talk about what Keycode has experienced. You know, at its core, you're still you're still moving the data, you're still migrating, copying, and, and there's some third-party uh, applications and platforms that can really help with that. Um, we tend to lean heavily on, on some data mover partners, such as Storage DNA, to just get all those files and all that data to either, you know, from, from on-prem up to the cloud, or if you're working in a multi-cloud environment, moving it to all the right places. But, um, you know, in the end, you are still copying and moving the data on some level. All right. So as far as uh, things we've experienced, um, you know, we've definitely used um, the slingshot tools inside of SNS Evo to directly push things to various cloud locations. Um, that can include LucidLink. Uh, the other thing we've also seen is... Um, folks who are pushing to an S3 bucket that's just sitting there as a as a repository where data is waiting to go somewhere else. And then when it's ready for editorial, because some shows don't have all the media today, we, we don't necessarily need to have that living in our Lucid instance. We can just park that in an S3 bucket. But then when we're ready to start working on that project, we can use something like uh, SDNA's Fabric running in the cloud to grab it from the S3 bucket and then put it into LucidLink. So it begins doing that work. And then when we're when the project's complete, it can actually handle the removal of the data from within the Lucid instance, uh, trying to keep costs down there. One of the other things we've seen um, a definite use for on-prem storage is there's still a lot of LTO tape out there. So if people are doing the initial ingests on-prem, to also facilitate their archive workflows and then push up to um, a Lucid or a cloud instance to park the media or begin work in editorial. Uh, that's been a very good use case for having the on-prem and hy hybrid uh, cloud NAS with Lucid. All right, question B. If you're transitioning to cloud storage, Lucid Link by default is using IBM Cloud, but there are options for AWS, Wasabi and others. Um, are you seeing any nuance or benefits of connectivity between Lucid Link and insert your cloud tier provider? Uh, let's get into it. And please, let's talk about usage for editorial versus usage for archive. Sure. So what's really great is that Lucid Link is fairly cloud agnostic. You know, we, we work with any S3 compliant storage as well as Azure Blob. So that's all of your, your hyperscalers plus any other um, providers that, that you may be using. So we do bundle with IBM. Uh, IBM Cloud is used for what we call our advanced offering. And there's a few benefits to, to using IBM. You know, they're, they're really robust and, and incredible as far as supporting you as a, as a hyperscale uh, solution. But we look at two different things, two different components really come into play. The first is that just on a setup level, because we bundle 
with IBM, we allow you to do turnkey file space creation. So if you want to set up a new file space, you don't need a lot of involvement from IT. You simply select IBM, you select the data center location that you want to use, and LucidLink does the rest in, on the back end. So that means that you're not worrying about setting it up. You're not managing that file space, or I'm sorry, you're not managing that storage uh, yourself. You're not dealing with additional billing from another from another person or, or company. Um, so we just sort of simplify that that whole process. It all comes through LucidLink. The other big thing that we've been getting an incredible response from customers on since we offer we offered this publicly starting in the spring of this year is that with IBM Cloud on this advanced offering, we offer it with no egress costs. So egress is that that evil four letter word that uh, you know either you live blissfully ignorant and you don't know uh, anything about egress, you don't think about it. Um, or egress is the bane of your existence where you're always worrying about what are those costs going to be? Uh, you know, how many editors do I have? How much footage are they pulling? And we're being charged every single time for it. So you never know what those costs are going to be, and it's completely unpredictable. So at that point, you're just waiting for the bill, and it's impossible to budget for so with this IBM offering, we're offering it with no egress costs. That makes it one predictable cost of you're paying for your file space at a certain capacity and you don't need to worry about how many users you have or how much they're egressing. And predictability, that's, that's a huge piece there. Um, you know, people need to present budgets regardless of how they're consuming dollars and being able to talk to the financial people and say, this is what I'm going to spend and I, I, I'm going to spend that, you're good. The thing also is um, if the S3 bucket isn't on your credit card, um, if it's on your credit card, you're going to find out about your egress charges pretty quickly. If it's on someone else's credit card in your company, someone will be coming to find you soon and ask you questions about why this usage spiked. And, exactly. Uh, yeah, you want to be, make sure you're you're all ready for that. Um, and the thing is, if you're using the IBM cloud, it's extremely easy. And if you're uh, calling key code up to provision this for you, it's even easier. We'll get you set up on the whole thing, send you your, your credentials, and off you go. You don't even have to, to do anything other than uh, reach out to us, and we can get you get you up and running. Um, on the trial, which will then convert into um, a, you know a paid instance if it all works out for you, we're pretty sure it will. That's right, and you know I, I think that's a great point about whether or not egress is on your your card or your budget. Um, one of the things that I've seen is that especially in these large enterprises where you may have multi multiple brands or divisions all working side by side. We often see one or two brands start with LucidLink and, and word sort of spreads around the company. But what this does by eliminating egress from the conversation is it makes it easier to onboard and sort of share this as a resource. You can much more easily determine, you know, oh, there's a new group that wants to join up. We want to add 20 terabytes, 50 terabytes, 100 terabytes to the mix. But if it's if it becomes a shared cost, which I know silos are always a thing, but a lot of companies are trying to do sort of centralized resources more. If it becomes a shared cost, it makes it that much easier to share that cost if you're not worrying about which group is is using the most egress and how we're splitting those costs up. Very cool. So something we don't have an app for is the crystal ball. Let's pull it out. What is the future roadmap for LucidLink? What tech challenges with remote productions are your development tech folks looking to address? And what other providers are you hoping to connect with better? Yeah, that's a great question. You know, the entire landscape of this industry is constantly evolving, constantly changing. And we've seen huge shifts, obviously, in the last couple of years, especially starting with, with the pandemic and, and really 
ha- being forced to embrace remote workflows. So, you know, from LucidLink's perspective, we are always developing, we're always trying to improve upon what we have, but a lot of our our feedback and really feature requests and prioritization of these features come from our customers and talking to our customers. So we need to stay on top of these trends as they are unfolding in front of us. And we need to then respond and be nimble enough to, to uh, pivot as the industry is changing. So some of our, our recent developments include um, we recently had a, a new SSO. We, we have SSO 2.0 to be more robust, um, as well as in the spring, we, we released metadata streaming, which just makes it that much easier and faster for all of your file spaces to load and just stay in sync. So the same streaming mechanism that we have for the data of the files themselves, we're now implementing for streaming the metadata for the entire file system. Um, you know, it can support even at this point, we've moved from millions up to billions of files. Uh, and because we work at the block level, people are hitting that, that billion file, uh, number a lot faster than they would think. So being able to, to stream that metadata when you have huge file spaces for, for a lot, a lot of these enterprises, that streaming of the metadata is, is really important. And because we, because we offer sort of unlimited storage because it's hosted in the cloud, we enable you to add as many files as you want. And so it all, it all comes into play together. Uh, the other thing that we recently introduced are non-root admin roles. So the ability for non-root users to still be administrators, do user management, set up uh, shares across file spaces. That's really important. So you don't have a single user. Um, again, this all came from customers saying we need to expand these permissions across more of our admins. But as far as what we're looking at down the line, roadmap wise, again, we, we sort of pivot as we need to, we respond to what the customer feedback is, but we are, we are looking at ways to expand SSO integrations, uh, supporting additional identity providers, um, as well as support for uh, skin provisioning and also potentially SAML as well. Uh, the The other thing that we're that is coming, uh, I can't give a date right now, but it, it's in the works, and this is. Uh, a huge request that we've heard from a lot of customers is what we're calling a remote upload indicator. Currently, if I want to put a file into a file space, I simply drag and drop and it starts copying in. And on my system, on my LucidLink client, I will see that I will see the progress of that file. But another end user will see the file pop up but won't necessarily know how complete that upload is. So this remote upload indicator would allow all remote users to be able to see any uh, uploads that are in progress and be able to track that progress as it goes. So that means that they'll know when a file is complete and can then begin working on, on that file, as it were. So those are a couple things that are coming. We are constantly talking to alliance partners across the, the technology landscape. Um, we've talked about some of them. We're, we're continuing to work with them and bring bring new partners into the fold as we go forward. Nimble and innovation, those 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 two together. So the, the thing is, if you are interested in being innovative and nimble in your organization and you want to kick the tires on a LucidLink CloudNAS instance, please give us here at Keycode a call. Uh, or, or an email or our website, and we can get you hooked up. We'll, we'll get you dialed in and um, off and running, and you can see just how uh, LucidLink can benefit your organization and you know your evolving workflows. David, gr- uh, great, great to talk to you today. Thanks for joining us, um, and I'm looking forward to uh, you know what LucidLink's going to do in the future. Yeah, thanks so much. Had a great time. 
us. Please make sure to subscribe to the podcast to receive future episodes. Follow Key Code Media on LinkedIn, Twitter, Facebook, or Instagram to receive news on additional AV, broadcast, and post-production technology content. See you next time, folks.